following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Welcome to Crew Roundtable Bites. Food for your mind. Recorded live to tape. No edits. Real, raw, and reasonable. This is Crew Roundtable Bites. Welcome back, friends, once again to episode two of Crew Roundtable Bites, the summer hiatus show for Crew Roundtable. As always, we encourage you to go to the website, crewroundtable.com. You can find links to all of our social media. And of course, we ask you to subscribe, 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 and share the podcast with your friends and enemies. Today, we are going to be discussing Canadian electoral reform. My name is Gino, and I'm joined by... JR. Hello, Gino. How's it going? I'm doing okay. I'm, uh, we're fresh. We're hot off the uh, recording of uh, our first episode, and uh, I'm really happy. I'm really jazzed. I think we're really well, and I'm, I'm looking forward to tackling this topic. Tell people what the topic was. This topic is... It was a, just a light fair. It's a, yeah, a light fair. <laughs> it's Canadian electoral reform, and uh, you know, it, it's dealing with... Uh, one of uh, what would some would say uh, Justin Trudeau's main broken promise that he uh, came he, he campaigned on one of one of his campaign uh, promises was to change the way Canada's electoral system works and uh, last year I believe they they uh, decided that is either unwanted or they weren't going to do it I couldn't remember how they were gonna, how they proposed it and that has brought them under fire so we are going to discuss tonight. Um, what we're going to talk about what is Canada's electoral process for our foreign listeners and how we should how it should it change for modern times and you also wanted to highlight something called strategic voting yes yeah, something that particularly applies to the current uh, the current system so why don't you give people a quick uh, a quick uh, explanation of of how you view strategic voting and then I'll take us through the different uh, the different systems that we have, and we'll get your views on each one. Okay. Okay. Well, the first, the way the the way the country votes now, the country and the provinces use very use identical systems. You have a governmental building that has X number. Uh, well, no, let's, let's go backwards. The country is broken down to a federal level, and this works on provincial level as well. But let's say a federal level, the country is broken in, down into uh, physical districts called ridings. And now each of those writings repre- literally represents a chair in the House of Commons. When you win your, so uh, what will happen is the parties will run a candidate in each uh, writing, including the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister has his, his or her own writing. And the difference is the Prime Minister is the leader of the party. Each party has a leader going into an election. Uh, every uh, every candidate competes in a riding, and the person who ha- gets the most votes in a riding wins the riding and therefore occupies a seat in the House of Commons. Each seat, because because we have because each seat re- is represented represented by a party member, that literally gives each party or the a vote on legislation. So. Uh, if your party has 40 seats and in, 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 in Canada, usually the party votes uh, uniformly. Therefore, the, the, a given party with X number of seats gets X number of votes. Well, not usually. They have to. It's, they not, have like, to. it's not like the U.S. They, parties in Canada enforce party discipline. So if you have a majority in Canada, you pretty much have carte blanche to do whatever you want. Exactly. So if you have, uh, you know, 50 plus 1%. 50% plus one seat of this thing, you are a majority and you will automatically win all votes in, in, in the, in the, in, in the House of Commons. Now, um, this brings, now the, the, the problem with this electoral system is that we have three parties. We have the Conservative Party of Canada. I wouldn't call that a problem. It, it is a problem. Uh, and I'll explain why. Okay. Um, we have a Conservative Party of Canada. We've got the Liberal Party of Canada, and we have the New Democratic Party of Canada. 
The problem, the reason it's a problem is both the Liberal Party and, and, and the... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jerry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but at this point in time, if anyone has gone back and listened to the first episode of Crew Roundtable, where it was all about a multiplicity of choices, <laughs> and now to hear you say that we have one too many parties and we have too many voices, I find that to be incredible. And I love getting these sorts of insights as we do the show. So that's my last plug for prior past episode. Blah, blah, blah. JR, please continue. It's only a problem because two two of the parties are essentially left leaning parties. The the, the the conservative party is a hard hard right party, but the liberal party is maybe right of center, and the new democratic party is, is further right is further left. Sorry, sorry. The liberal party is left of center, and the new democratic party or NDP as we'll call them going forward are further left. So you're essentially the two parties are unfortunately splitting the left vote. The liberals have wavered back and forth. So when you said that first they were a little right of center and first they were a little left of center, they are masters of kind of walking that tightrope. So they there do. are points in time when they are a little right and they are a little left, which is testament to their success. They're further. They're 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 definitely they're 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 decidedly left of the conservative party. Yes, but they're they're not they're not the party of hippies. No, uh, you might you might want to call it, that that would be reserved for the Green Party and NDP. The, the Green Party being a very small uh, environmentally focused party, uh, but the NDP is more is a, is is about as close to hippies as you're really going to get in this country, and and that's and unfortunately that is. And the Greens are in favor of a lot of these electoral reforms because they pretty much get shut out of everything at this point. Yes. These electoral reforms are meant not to help the governing party. These are meant to give smaller parties more of a say. Um, and uh, sorry, so you went through and you went through all the parties and uh, you were going to explain just roughly how the legislation gets passed. Yeah, so now, the, now, the, the, now one of the limitations I, I find of this is that Mathematically, you really only need any a, a given party only needs twenty five percent of the population to vote for them to get a majority. I, I'll think of it this way. I thought it was I thought it was thirty. Thirty probably ensures it because but it, twenty five is like the mathematical minimum. It, like think of it this way. Yeah, if you um, win by a little and lose by a lot. If first of all, you only need to win half the writings in the country. Yeah. Okay. And of those writings, you only need 50% of those people to... Once 50% of those people vote for a given candidate, the other two candidates, they split the vote and the one person automatically wins, right? So 50% of 50% is 25%. Look at the so math. Look at the you math. only need... Strict that out. Thirty percent is probably more of a guarantee because you're not really going to get that even distribution of, uh, of people voting one way, and you're not going to get exactly fifty percent people. You know, um, you get thirty three, and you've got uh, the CBC calling the election over at six oh one p.m. Yeah, and realistically, you just need you don't actually in the writing you don't need a majority of the votes. You just need the most of the votes. But th but you know, if you want to do it mathematically. You need half the province. You need half the writings, and in each writing, you need a minimum, a maximum of half the people voting for you. And therefore, that's that represents twenty five percent of the population. So now you can see how people would become disgruntled uh, at the uh, with the current voting system. Now you've got a quarter of the people being able to dictate to the rest of seventy five percent of the country. That's not exactly, uh, you know, the vo listening to the voice of the people. That's listening to the voice of the minority. If if you if you think about it, if, if especially the, especially since we have an ineffective Senate. Yeah, the Senate is a waste of time. But that's another that's another time. Well, no, but but no, the whole point of the Senate is to guard exactly against that. Where if we look at the U.S. model, no matter the population, every Senate. Or every state has two senators. Because, Wyoming has yeah. exactly the same say as California. That's because their senate is elected and ours is appointed. Their senate is different. elected. It's effective because it's got actual powers mm -hmm. and it's equal, right? That's the triple E senate. That's the goal for people in Canada. It's never going to happen because it's way too complicated to crack open the constitution and redo the senate. But I agree with you. 
there's a very small group of people, or not, I, I don't want to say a small group of people, but you don't need much popular support to become the government. And yeah. that is and that is the first, so that is our existing system, and it's called first past the post. The post is, there's X number of writings that you need to get, first person to get that number wins. Yeah, the first yeah the first person to get more, more than fifty percent, basically is, is, is undefeatable. Yes, yeah. the seats writings are equal. One writing equals one seat. So if you hear us uh, saying writings versus seats, they they basically represent the same thing. One writing is one ch- literal chair in the House of Commons, as I said earlier. And this is the system that was apparently chosen by the people of Canada as part of a survey by the Liberal government after they were elected, where one of the main pillars of their election platform was, we are going to bring in electoral reform in Canada. I find that very hard to believe. I don't want to put on my tinfoil hat. I do that on my own show, Hot Takes. Go to crewroundtable.com, subscribe, listen. Um, but that is the first system that, we're going to, that, that we've just pretty much discussed. We've gone through the pros and cons, um, which is called first past the post. So these are now the options of what we can change to. Now, there's a million and one ways that people can elect the government. These just happen to be the most popular ones and the ones that were presented to the people of Canada. The one we're going to start with is proportional representation. This is a system that is a popular alternative to first past the post in many countries around the world. Um, The idea is to make sure that the party... They are represented proportional to the share of the votes. So in our current system, as JR was pointing out, you need 25% at a minimum to get a majority government. You have 30% of the popular vote. You are going to a runaway landslide victory in terms of number of seats. You could have 200 of the 308 or whatever it is now. They're always rejigging the number of seats. But you could easily get two-thirds of the seats with only one-third of the vote in Canada at the federal level. This proportional representation allows you to go, uh, or uh, just to, uh, just to clarify, they rejig the seats because the population density changes. The population, correct. It, it, it keeps it keeps. But there is some it, gerrymandering it, that goes. There on. is gerrymandering going on, uh, but uh, we try. But basically, they try to keep each riding representing roughly the same number of people. Uh, therefore, if you in more rural areas, writings are much larger, whereas in urban areas, writings could be a few blocks. Literally a few blocks. Literally a few blocks, so that you don't end up with giving fewer people, people more say in the government than others, which is, which is a problem they do have in the U.S. That's the problem with their system, is it's not, they don't rebalance the system for populations of each state. But we're, we're, this isn't the U.S. podcast, but that, that's one of the primary problems the U.S. has in their system. It puts a lot of power in the few and ignores the many. Uh, moving back to the proportional representation, uh, the, the main selling feature of proportional representation is more parties can win seats. So how does that work? Does it basically take, you go in, you vote for the party... And then each party is that all the votes are tallied up for each party, and then they divide the house seats by in, in accordance with those proportions, the percentage that each party won. Right. There is a rebalancing. So, for instance, we were talking about the Green Party, right? Yeah. So the Green Party normally gets what two to three percent of the vote across mm-hmm. Canada, but because they're spread out so sparsely across Canada. They never have a seat. Yes. At, at one point in Ontario, they were very close to getting something like 5% of the vote, and they were getting money from the government as an official party. Um, and then that was squashed. Um, but, uh, or quashed, not squashed, not the vegetable. It was quashed. Um, but that is something where, or, but under proportional representation, smaller parties will get in. So I'm very curious to hear what your critique of this is because if you think we've already got too many parties at three, um, the number one critique of this system is you end up with too many voices 
and you end up with people having to form coalitions. Yes, but th- that's yeah, that that's been the, the original. So basically, the way it works, you add up all the things. And now, if like for example, if the Liberal Party gets thirty percent of the vote, thir- so you're voting directly for the party. You're not direct. You're not voting for any one local representative. You're voting for the party. If uh, and, and and if the party gets thirty percent of the vote, they get awarded thirty percent of the seats, and they populate those seats as they see fit. And and um, while this is more egalitarian, many people say that it, it will virtually eliminate any kind of majority government and therefore will cause uh, will cause slowdown in getting any legislation passed. Others have argued, and I, and I would probably favor, it prevents any kind of... Uh, in a majority government, the government can do anything they want, as long as it's not illegal. They can pass all sorts of laws with um, with zero opposition because they own because they vote because they have the majority of the seats. They are, can never be defeated in any vote, uh, which gives them an unreasonable amount of power. Uh, I think we, we, we and just to show you in the past, the Har- Harper government was in power for at least about ten years, approximately more, ten, more. ten years. but. For up until the last four years, they were always a minority government. They were not very radical. They are pretty low, low key. It wasn't until they achieved the, they finally achieved the majority government in the four, last four years of their term that they went bananas with power. You know, they were throwing, they, they were muzzling scientists. They were throw, they were literally throwing away research into the garbage. They were doing unbelievably radical things. They were passing, as you as you heard in our previous previous uh, episode, they were t- they were making specific anti murder laws targeted towards specific religious groups. You know, they 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 were running roughshod without any leash, and that is the danger of having a majority government. And they, they were are punished. Unleashed. They were punished for it. They were punished, they were punished for, it, for it, but in the meantime, we had four years of problems. You know, uh, you know the uh, the conservative government was specifically against any mention of climate change. They will not. They did not even allow go- government scientists, government funded scientists, to do interviews about climate change. They were completely muzzled. If you were, if if you. Uh, if you were caught giving a public statement on climate change, they would actually, you could lose your funding, you could be fired. You know, this wasn't even slandering the government. This was having a technical exchange uh, on a public medium, you could be fired. And this is the danger. I think he's, uh, Harper really exemplified the danger of having uh, unlimited power in the Canadian government. And it's for that reason I would rather have less get done, and have it be agreed upon by more party, um, by various different parties, to make sure that it's it is is a egal- is, is an egalitarian law. So are you pro or con on proportional representation? I'm pro. I'm pro. So I th- you're. I, I think we should anything that pro and, and if I, I think we should do away with majority governments, especially when majority governments don't represent the majority of the population. Okay, so you're a con on first past the post? Yes, I'm con on first past the post. I think proportional representation. At first, I thought it was ridiculous, but but and this was you know before this was when I was in university. I thought it was ridiculous. Nothing was going to get through, but then I saw how, um, how how Harper's government behaved when they were minority versus majority, and no power, no government should ever have that kind of power again. And I and I'm I'm and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a really red red blooded liberal, but nobody should have that kind of un un un, un uh, calculated power, especially not one that's based on minority. I I think I would support proportional representation. So the only con that uh, or the only uh, con that you missed uh, in your analysis of proportional representation is that um, the actual representatives. Uh, come from party lists. So you're not actually voting for any one individual person, um, which uh, some people may see that 
as a con because they don't really know who they're voting for when they get in. True. There's no local... No local. There's no local representative. The, the person who gets in doesn't represent your writing. He just represents your vote. They do represent your vote, but there, there's no tie to your voting location, but I'm okay with that. Now, this, uh, the third option here, I think is an option, if you were pro on proportional representation, I think you're going to be super pro on this one. Mm -hmm. This is a ranked ballot. And the way that this works, sometimes it's called preferential voting. The way that this works is very similar to how some of the parties choose their own leaders, where you vote for people that you think should represent the riding or the seat or people who you think should win. But you vote for the person who you think is the best choice. Then you pick your second best choice. Then you pick your third best choice and so on down the list. If there are 10 people running, you could vote for 10 people and you could vote for them in the order that you think they would be best suited to represent that riding. Or you could just vote for one person and say, I think the other nine are trash. You have to get 50% of the votes, of the ranked votes, to win that seat. So let's say that they add up all of the number one votes. And you've got Mr. A, who wins 40% of the number one votes. Mr. B wins 30% of the number one votes. Nobody's won 50%. Mm -hmm. Then you would go and say, well, who is everyone's second choice? And maybe nobody liked Mr. A as their second choice. That would give Mr. B a chance to say, well, once we take into account everyone's second place vote, I now have 50% of all the votes that have been cast. So Mr. B would win that seat. What do you think of that system? I think it's too confusing. Um, you know, it, it, elections, the election voting should be black and white. And, you know, you're voting for this person. You're voting for, for this party. And I think, I, think, I think ranked ballot makes it almost impossible to be able to properly, affirmatively decide who you want. It, it, be, it, it starts to become too fluid if someone gets in on a technicality it becomes a very technicality laced system and I think it's very confusing well, there, well, there, there is no technicality it just comes down to how you vote so let's put this in a concrete example I think for the common person there's too much math well, going no, no, on in that no, no. and it's very hard for you. to understand it no for me I don't, I don't think it's good I think I think I just want to make a choice I don't I don't care how many parties to choose from but you have to pick one so you know, when you want to be, you want to make a choice, you want to make a cake, you got to break some eggs. You have to make a choice, and that and life is about choices. So let's say that you lived in Quebec, just because I want to get as many parties in here as possible. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you lived in Quebec, and in Quebec there's five parties, right? Yeah. Uh, because they have the one federal party that only runs in Quebec. So you would have a choice to pick between five people. Your number one choice may be the Liberal Party. Your number two choice may be the NDP. You wouldn't have to vote for anyone else. One of the pros of this system is that it reduces that strategic voting that you were talking about before. True. Knowing that, have you changed your opinion on it? No, no. I, I'm still no. I think I think there's there's too many just too much deciding. In other words, there's no such thing as a wasted vote on on a ranked ballot because your votes will always be counted until someone actually wins with the majority of support from the riding. Go ahead. I I, I still think it's overly confusing to the common voter. Um, it's too drastic. I mean, maybe maybe it might be a good future vote once, but but voting is still associated with. One position, one choice, regardless of how many candidates there are. Because you really can only throw, ultimately, you should only be, conceptually, you're only throwing your support against one person. Because ultimately, one person is going to win. So voting for three people kind of it doesn't follow because you're, you, oh, I'm voting these three people, but only one person is really going to win it. So there's kind of a disconnect between 
the outcome versus your choicing, right? One more pro of this system, and in case you can't tell, I really like this system. Okay. <laughs> one more, one more pro of this system is that in areas where this system is in place, there is a sharp decline in attack ads because people realize I may not get your first vote, but I may persuade you enough to give me your second vote. So we don't have people going for the all or nothing, nuclear warfare, scorched earth, I'm attacking you full stop because you're a terrible person because it does reflect poorly on them. They have to worry about people who they may be able to persuade that I'm not your first choice, but there's something here. There's some substance to my campaign and I would appreciate you acknowledging me as part of your ranking when you go out and vote. Thoughts? I, I think it's a good possibility for somewhere in the future, but I think as the next step from first past the post, it's too radical, it's too different, and it's very, it's so different that I think people would reject it outright just because it's different and can completely ignore its benefits. I think it's a hard sell. I really think it's a hard sell. It's too confusing. Really? So you come down as a super con on that one? Yeah, I think it's just way too radical. I'm not saying it's wrong, and I'm not saying the system is is flawed. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna debate your pros. I just feel it, it, it's too radical to change. Oh, we we have we have for the, we have for this party for for this for this seat, um, we're gonna pick three guys. That you know, it, 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 I think a lot of people are gonna have a problem with making three choices for one position. I, I am I am shocked. I thought for sure. I thought for sure you would have been super pro on that one. But uh, I will make another bold prediction, given my history of wrong predictions. I, I'm not saying it's a stupid idea. I'm not. No, I'm, no, not I'm, I'm not super negative either. But I, I don't think. I think it's too radical. I, I would even be a little confused on on the process. Well, if confusion is a topic, then mm -hmm. you will be super con on single transferable vote. Dear Lord, what the hell is that? Uh, this is, it, it took me a while. Uh, even when I was going through, they had a graphic up on the screen of the website I went to, and I, it, it was very hard for me to follow. But single transferable vote, in the description, it says it's a complex system of ranked voting. So it involves oh ranking and more. <laughs> I, I, I think when you put too much complexity, you, there, there is there is a risk of government uh, interference in, ch in trying to play around with the, with the math. Yeah. And, and then the, the common person would never be able to... You, you, need, a, you need a highly educated... You need to be... You'd have a, you need a highly high math degree to be able to understand that there's a bias going on. Oh, there is, there is no such thing as strategic voting in this because you would have to figure out what's going on first. Uh, this, this would increase the number of seats... It boils down to, for any one particular riding, it would have X number of seats. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one mapping anymore between one riding and one seat. You would, or there would be an arbitrary decision saying for a person to win, whatever number of for the person to win one of the available seats in this riding, you have to get X number of votes. So you would have to know how many people are in the riding, how many people are voting, and you would have to say. Once someone achieves, say, 10,000 votes, mm -hmm. they win a seat. Okay, so, so, so right. the number of seats would be in flux until the end of the election. The, well, the, well, not, well, it wouldn't be, well, it wouldn't be in flux. Like, you would know how many seats are there in the riding, right? Because there's only X number of seats that you can win, right? But they would go and say, once you hit 10,000 votes, you win a seat. Anyone else who voted for you, your votes over 10,000 get redistributed to the other people running in the riding so that you're inflating someone else's number to get up to that 10,000. That that almost defeats the point of having a vote. And it is it I mean it overrules your choice. It, it's it, it doesn't that is that is terrible. I, I fully agree. That is, is terrible <laughs> because if you're you can't it's at least at least with your with with the with the with the, with the previous option, you know the, your vote is going towards the person you intended to, you know. Even if it goes to second, it's at least going to something you've decided. 
the city. No, worse, worse. Your vote gets given to someone else. Th- that that defeats the purpose of voting. It's uh, it's a, it is a system that is difficult to explain and understand, and I would say difficult to even take seriously because I, I find it ridiculous. Uh, yeah, no, that's that, that, that that's that's ridiculous. I, I can't. Uh, I can't, I can't support that at all. Now, if Canadians said we don't want that, then I would certainly agree with the results of the survey. Um, but the final uh, voting system that we have here uh, of the major voting systems, mixed member proportional. So this one, I got to say, when you sit down and think about it, it makes sense, but it may not pass that initial complexity uh, or the initial simplicity level that we're looking at. And this is used in a couple of places in the world, uh, notably Germany and New Zealand. So MMP, Mixed Member Proportional, it's a hybrid voting method. It uses first-past-the-post, and it uses proportional representation. Uh, This was actually put forward to people in Ontario, to the voters of Ontario in 2007, and it was voted down. So the way this system works is there are two different candidates. You vote for a local candidate, So it gets around the, you know, trustees that I don't know. Okay. And you vote for a party. So the party, so the party gets a vote at the national level. The individual gets a vote at the local riding level. So the individual is running for the seat, the actual seat. Okay. So, so is that, is that, 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 so that's like voting for, it's kind of like what the U.S. does, where they vote for their the House of Co- the, the, the vote for the House, and then they vote for the president separately. Correct. It's similar to that. Similar. Similar in that you're voting for two different two different things. So okay, this in this system there are two types of seats: a local seat and a national seat. Okay. So you vote for the local guy, the local girl. She wins that seat. She's your representative. Okay. Right. What they do is then. In addition to all the seats of ridings that people have won, they look at how parties fared at the national level, and those national level seats are used as top-ups, where it's supposed to even out and give a better representation. There could be a guy who's extremely popular locally, and people will vote for him. But in terms of a national level, People may say, I really like the ideas put forward by this other party. But for some reason, I like this guy. He's been here 30 years. He's always answered the phone when I called him. I think he's doing a good job. I like this guy, this girl, this person. This person, I think, is doing a good job. I want them to represent me. But I like this other party better. But but so then but the national seats and the local seats all have this all have equal voting, right? The national seats are filled by trustees. Yeah, no, no, but a voter in, list, in, basically. In, in, no, but in terms of voting against legislation, they all have an equal vote. Yes, correct. Okay, so, so yeah, have, there's two so types of seats. So you have X votes that are can be assigned to anybody. Yep. Those are the national seats. Yep. And Y votes. Why seats that are that are vote on individually? Correct. Um, mixes it mixes. There's a little bit of ranking involved. There's first past the post because again, you're still getting to person with the most seats makes the rules. What do you think? It's a bit. It's it's better than the last option. I'll give you that. Much better. Um, I still think it's. I guess um, mm, mm, it helps a little bit. I, I I don't know. I think I think it's still a little complicated. I think that might be a, a better option than the than the uh, than the the, the blended uh, one the option that you gave before. What was that? The, Single transferable vote. The yeah. mess. We're just gonna call no, it. No, for, no, no, no. The one before that. Um, the one where. Oh, you, the ranked. Uh, ballot. Yeah, I, I think I would prefer that to the ranked ballot. Mm-hmm. But I'm still like, and I, I still prefer the proportional because realistically, in Canada, we don't. Not a lot of people vote for the person they both. They, they're voting for the party they represent. It's turning more into that. I think they used to see it as a personal choice, but because we've got party discipline, it almost doesn't matter who's there. Exactly. They, they're not going to, they can't break rank, and unless they decide to go independent. Unless they're a really strong force in the party, but really, of all the, you know, say we've got 300 people who get elected to sit in the House of Commons in Canada, you've got, of those 308, 
you've got people who, if it's a majority situation, people who are not in the majority are of no value, right? They can't yeah, do anything. Exactly. Unless the individual- Within the majority, you've got the prime minister and his cabinet who basically run the government. They're the ones who get chances to get up and speak. They're the guys who get up in question period. They are the guys who set policy. Everyone else is basically just being told by the party whip, show up and vote today. Yes, and vote for this, you're kicking out of the party. Exactly. You're right. It it almost becomes irrelevant. So I I think at the end of the day, proportional representation is the simplest and is more in line with how Canadians actually vote. I mean, yeah, the person comes out and shakes your hand and stuff like that, but unless unless your local representative has been uh, revealed to be doing something completely egregious, like the conservative uh, candidate a couple years in the last election who was uh, caught on video urinating into... He was actually a plumber and a representative. He was caught on camera urinating into a customer's sink. Wait, that guy was a politician? He was. I thought he was just a plumber. No, he was a plumber and a politician. Well, I missed that story. Yes. <laughs> you know, but then again, I missed pri- out on Waco. His primary occupation was not... Uh, plumber? Was, was not, well, it was a problem. It was not a politician. I guess he hadn't been elected yet. He was running... So, therefore, he was a part-time politician. I guess you're not a full-time unless you actually win the seat. And he was, therefore, replaced when he was caught on, on, on the customer's, the homeowner's security camera. Uh, I think it was actually, he actually peed into his into their, cu- their mug. Sink. Yeah, mug. The, and then, in the mug, yeah. dumped it into the sink, rinsed out the mug. Okay, sorry. So, this was a critique of what again? This, this, this uh, example uh, so of the peeing that's, that's, plumber politician? That's the only time you take the per- you, we would take the person into effect. Oh right, right. Like, well, I'm not going to vote for that guy. He's the guy who peed in the cup. But if if all three candidates were like you know well respected members of the society and fairly equal uh, in terms of how they conduct themselves as human beings, you're basically just rep- voting for the party they represent. You know, you don't vote for that. that, that that's my point. Is you would. Not vote for someone based on their on who they were, but you don't vote for someone because of who they were. You vote for someone based on the party they're representing. So, Jr. Exit questions. What do you think of the current system, first past the post? Um, it, it, it's antiquated, and I feel it, it theoretically puts too much power in too few people. It, it doesn't really. Uh, express the will of, of, of the majority of the people. And of the options listed, your number one choice to Pro- replace first the, past the post? The proportional representation. Proportional always. representation. It's very simple. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's much closer to how we actually vote in Canada. Uh, you know, you vote, you, we're voting for the party. Primarily, we vote for the party. In, in small cases, you vote for a person, but I think 90% of the time, Canadians vote for the party. And I think that's more in line with the way we vote. And I think that would be the most, it is the most, I think it's the most egalitarian way of filling the seats. For my opinion on this, uh, the true evil is party discipline and having a ineffective Senate in Canada. If you allowed people to vote their conscience on bills, I think you could have any one of these systems come in because then you would get people voting and being forced to stand on their personal record instead of hiding behind the shield of, well, I need to do this so that I can have a seat at the table because I think that's one of the biggest cop-outs we've got going in our country and in our electoral system. Uh, JR, once again, we have episode two in the books of Crew Roundtable Bites. I encourage everyone, please go to the website, Crew Roundtable, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You will get the flagship show of Crew Roundtable, as well as the other shows that we have on there. One feed for your convenience, always something new to listen to. And of course, follow us on Twitter at crewroundtable.com, Twitter account manned by the one and only JR. Highly entertaining, and I encourage all of you. JR, any final thoughts? Um, Yeah, other than, yeah, I, I think it was a serious misstep for the government not to step up and um, and, and, and move and, and, and decide and make a decision on on this at least have Elections Canada do an in-depth research I th- I, I, I am dubious as how this so-called survey was was produced was made um, as I've said before in the crew roundtable podcast 
there's some decisions that you have to put in, in the hands of capable people and not everybody is qualified to comment on every election. That's why we have elections. We elect someone who we feel is educated and knowledgeable that can speak on our behalf. This is why not every law is a referendum. You know, you cannot have that because people just don't understand the complexity of laws. And it's the whole point of having a representative. Otherwise, we should just scrap the government and just referendum every law. And, you know, 90% of the people will not read the law and then just may, just vote for their guts and nothing will get done. So, uh, in terms of election, I think we need we need to have people with an educated look uh, who are experts on uh, on uh, on um, on elections, and, and and they should actually come up and and and, and, change, and, and do the decision for us. It's how we. That's why we. It's why we have a government. The, I think the reason the government did not change a lot is because basically most of these decisions will essentially eliminate a majority government and nobody actually wants to give up that possibility of unlimited power. The, you know, that the, the possibility of having a majority government is, is, is the ultimate goal. And while yes, it's, it's theoretically productive in terms of passing of bills, uh, those bills are not automatic, are not necessarily good for everybody. And by, by taking that power away, you, you, you have to, it forces the party in power to create bills that are acceptable across more party lines, which makes, which, which keeps the, which keeps the, the laws from being overly extreme and at least being agreed upon by, um, by representatives representing more of the country. So I, I think we need to get rid of, the, we, we need to go to a system that makes majority governments rarer. And when they do occur, it's because they actually re represent a majority of, of the population. And with that last word, this has been episode two of Crew Roundtable Bites. Visit us at crewroundtable.com to subscribe. Take care.